Hi, everybody. It's good to be with you for our time of devotion and prayer today. Um, right off the bat, I just want to say I know this is um, this is just a very COVID pandemic video. I know the lighting is terrible. I'm outside because our house is full of uh, <laughs> I have a spouse working from home and kids trying to sleep and um, so finding a quiet space to film is a little tricky. So I know it is what it is. Um, we're all in this together, aren't we? Um, I also want to name right here at the start that um, today is a complicated day for us. It's the day of the inauguration um, and there's a lot of just a lot of intensity that comes with that. Um, a lot of fear, a lot of hope, um, many people feeling many things in pretty intense ways today. So um, however you're doing with all of that, I hope that you're able to feel God's presence with you and trust in the goodness and power of our God um, and that we'll get through this together. Um, it's going to feel like we're switching gears, but we are going to come back around to all that's happening in our world. But I want to start by talking about this process that we went through when I was in seminary in our pastoral care class. And uh, we completed something called a genogram. Some of y'all will maybe know what that is. It's an exercise in looking at dynamics within a family. And we were doing this so that when we provided pastoral care and counseling to parishioners, we would have some understanding of family dynamics and um, also to, you know, to do some self-reflection and, and to know a little bit about how family dynamics play out in a congregation. But all that aside, we, what we did is that we were invited to take an in-depth look at our family, at the um, health or lack of health in the relationships between the people, um, the variety of difficult things um, and wonderful things that people had been through and to kind of map it out in a very physical way on a piece of paper so that we could look at everything. And doing this involved a process of not only writing down the things that you were already aware of, but we were actually encouraged to go to family members um, when we felt comfortable doing so, when we were able to do so, um, to ask in more detail about the family stories. Um, we, we learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, you know, I have a wonderful family, but like all families, you know, I learned, um, okay, over here, there was some addiction that I wasn't aware of. Over here, there was some abuse that I wasn't aware of. Over here, there was a close relationship. Over here, there was a broken relationship. That kind of a thing. And it was really hard. Um, I think it was hard for all of us to really take a real look at um, not only the beautiful moments for which we give so much thanks, um, not only the relationships that were wonderful and that um, formed us in the best ways, but to really take a realistic look at the entire picture and how all of those things, uh, both good and bad, both wonderful and traumatic, had shaped the people that we had become and were becoming. To me, it feels like, um, as a nation right now, it feels very similar uh, to that process of creating our genograms, of going back and learning um, in more detail the story of my family. It feels that we're learning in more detail uh, the complete story of who we are as a nation, as a people, um, that some things are coming to light that are not acceptable. Um, things that are hard to talk about, things that we would rather um, be kept as a skeleton in the closet rather than having them out in the open where we have to face it <laughs> when we don't know always what to do about it, uh, where we don't always feel uh, that we have the power to handle what we've learned. <clears throat> 
I'm going to take us to one of my favorites, so many, one of so many people's favorites, Father Richard Rohr. Um, lots of y'all know that he does a series of daily devotions based out of the Center for Action and Contemplation. And <clears throat> the theme that they've set for this year, they choose different themes at different times in this year, the theme is a time of unveiling. And this is not from one particular devotion. This is from the um, cover page of their 2021 daily meditations. You can find this on the website of that Center for Action and Contemplation. So Richard Rohr says, I believe the gospel is not about any idealism. It's not about an ideal world where everybody loves everybody. It's not idealism. It's utter realism. The tragic sense of life, the absurd sense of everything. That's the gospel. And then they go on to say, we are living through a period of global disorder. People around the world are experiencing tremendous suffering uncertainty and disruption to their lives. Reality is being unveiled. Systems of evil and injustice are being seen in greater clarity, and our collective normal has been radically upended. Walking through this chaos and despair can be difficult, but ultimately it is when everything seems adrift that the spiritual journey becomes both an anchor and a sail. God uses tragedy, suffering, pain, and even death to guide us into greater love. Central to Father Richard's teaching and the gospel is the strong affirmation that the reality of disorder always gives way to the hopeful possibility of reorder. In this time of revelation and tumult, contemplation helps us welcome reality as it is with a different set of eyes. We become more able to receive each moment in its present form and remain open to grace, learning to recognize and even embrace our shadow selves without condemnation or shame. What I hear in these words is so Lutheran, even though Father Richard Rohr is not Lutheran. Um, I hear a radical, clear naming of the reality of things, that we are seeing horrific uh, racism, anti-Semitism, white nationalism, violence done in the name of Jesus. We name it. And also an incredible and radical hope, the trust that God is at work, that we can participate in that good work and that change is coming it is already happening, that Jesus died and rose again, and we are gonna live like that is true. I wanna wrap up today with a prayer, again by Father Richard Rohr. Let us pray. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for us all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our hearts longing for the healing of our suffering world. Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Y'all, it is a tough time, <clears throat> but I believe that in facing the toughness of it, we become open to the hope that God gives us, open to faithful and strong action, open to trusting the Holy Spirit to bring us to a better day. May you trust that today, and even when you can't, may you know that God is right there with you.